Hi, good afternoon class. Today we're going to learn new topic, political system in Malaysia. Basically in Malaysia, our government adopts three different types of systems. The first one is known as constitutional monarchy. The second system is parliamentary democracy. And the last one is federation. Uh, some might call it federalism. Okay, let's look one by one what is constitutional monarchy, parliamentary democracy, and federation. The word, the term constitutional monarchy is obviously come from two words, monarchy and constitution. So we have monarchy here. Monarchy is always represented by the king. And we have constitution. How do we draw a constitution? Okay, let's me draw the federal constitution then. Okay. So, constitutional monarchy comes from two words, monarchy and constitution. What does it mean? In constitutional monarchy, in order for a government to be known as a constitutional monarchy, it must have monarch or king. So, we have king in Malaysia, right? And this is the unique future of Malaysia. We have nine kings in Malaysia and we are the only king, the only country in the world has more than one king. Other country, either they have one king or they don't have king at all. So we have monarch. In fact, we have nine monarch in Malaysia and one of them will serve as Yang Dipertuan Ago and they will rotate among these five kings every five years. However, if you look at some countries like Saudi Arabia or Brunei, they also have king, but their system is not known as constitutional monarchy. Yet, it is known as absolute monarchy or kingdom. Why? Because in Malaysia, even though we have king, but this king, the power of this king is not absolute. He is not the source of law. Yet, king in Malaysia is bounded by the law as reveal or outline in the constitution. So we have constitution here, federal constitution. So constitution monarchy means the country has a king, has a monarch, yet this monarch is not absolute in terms of power, rather his power is bounded, defined, determined by the constitution. And in this case, constitution the, the position of the constitution is higher compared to the monarch. This system we call constitutional monarchy. Go to the second concept, parliamentary democracy. As constitutional monarchy, you can see parliamentary democracy comes from two words, democracy and parliament. Okay, democracy is normally represented by the election. Okay? It's impossible for a country to be democratic if there is no election. So this is balloon box if you don't know because I know my, my drawing is bad. Okay, this is a balloon box representing democracy. Why? Because in a democratic system, people got a, ch got a chance to elect for their own leaders. And parliament, okay, it's the legislature, the institution who make law or amend law, uh, make law or enact laws. Okay, let me draw parliament here. Okay, this is our parliament. So in democracy system, we have people as the source of power. People of voters as the source of power. And these people in elect or vote for their representative. 
and later their representative will sit in the parliament and they are later known as members of parliament. So this is here democracy. Parliament, okay, we have MPs. So from people, they elect MP. And some of the MPs together with the senators will form a cabinet. So this is the, the parliament part because MP sits in the parliament. Parliamentary democracy from this illustration means a system where people and voters elect, choose their members of parliament who later some of them become the cabinet members. So here the parliament, the members of parliament, they are responsible and accountable towards the people and later they are also responsible and accountable towards the cabinet members. So these concepts from people become from people who electing members of parliament who later sit in the parliament and these people some of them will be selected as the cabinet members this concept we known as parliamentary democracy federation is a system of government where the constitution clearly divides the power between federal government and state government. The constitution clearly specified what are the jurisdiction that falls under the federal government and what are the jurisdiction that fall under the state government. So in Malaysian case, um, our federal government is responsible on um, internal security. Okay, foreign affairs. What else? Economics. And so on. So these are the jurisdiction under the federal government, which other layer of government, such as state government, cannot interfere. It is the Malaysian government who take care if there is any terrorist attack in Malaysia. It is the federal government, Malaysian government, who send the diplomats and make diplomatic relationship with other countries. Okay, tackle the foreign affairs issue. It is the federal government who responsible in the economic development of Malaysia. Okay, the inflation rate and so on, unemployment rate and so on, it is under the responsibility of the federal government. While the state government is responsible in some other areas, such as Islamic law. Malay culture. Okay, and so on. So these issue, these areas, these three areas absolutely fall under the federal government, which state government cannot interfere at all. And these two areas falls under the jurisdiction of state government, which federal government cannot interfere at all. However, there are certain areas, okay, that federal government and state government can cooperate together. This area we call concurrent, concurrent list or common list. Okay, such areas, uh, if I can give you examples such as scholarship, education, health. So when it comes to scholarship, federal government can offer scholarship or educational loan to student. Okay, currently uh, JPA, PTPTN are doing state government okay also can offer scholarship and educational loan to its citizens okay through many of them doing it through yayasan or the foundation the state foundation okay so both can cooperate when it comes to um education itself for example so federal government can establish can build schools can national schools 
uh, national university and on the other hand okay state government also can also establish their own school and university okay such as uh, UDCEL is uh, Selangor State University okay it's not belong to the federal government so in this area both of them can cooperate so in sum there are three Political system practice in Malaysia. The first one is constitutional monarchy, where the monarch we have the monarch who is ruling the country, but his power is determined by the federal constitution. Second, we have parliamentary democracy, where the people elect their own representative to the parliament, and this leader, the members of parliament, become part of the cabinet. And the last one, we have the federation, which is the system that distribute divides the power between federal government and state government so that's it